So now coming to our next case. Our next case, four years old child, fever, swelling in face. Again, referred for ultrasound, but I could not see anything on ultrasound. Child was completely uncooperated. She was in very severe pain. This was the reason why I couldn't see anything out of it. So we decided to do a CT again. But before we got a, got a CT done, there is a survey image of the CT that I've shown you. And this image is worth a thousand words. Why? Because I have already discussed the importance of the plain radiograph of the cervical spine or the neck taken in a lateral view to assess infections of the neck. Can you see anything abnormal? I hope everybody of you is going to agree with me even without measuring any prevertebral soft tissue thickness that this is an abnormal case. Abnormal case. I mean, what makes it even more severe, more abnormal is this thing, strider. You know, this is something that you hear. I mean, when the patient is taking a deep inspiration or uh, an expiration, you can hear the sound of breathing, hear the sound of inspiration. That's tried up. We need to have a bit of the clinical knowledge as well. This is the reason why I'm telling you this. This patient was having stride. I could listen to her breathing. So she was having stride. I mean, yeah, stride, it has got something to do with that angel involvement. So this is something which means that there must be some form of a compression of the aerodigestive tract. Now, Let's have a look at this particular radiograph. What does it show you? We can see that there is an increased prevertebral soft tissue thickness which is extending from C1 level and definitely up to the C6 level. Whatever we can see out of it. We can also see that the curvature of the spine is more of concave now as if something is pushing the spine posteriorly and due to all this mess, what has happened to our airway? Our poor airway appears to have been compressed specifically in this region. Here in the subplotic region, it looks almost okay. So it means we are again dealing with some form of a neck space infection. Even without getting a CT image, I can tell you that there is a deep neck space infection. And this is probably the level of the hyoid bone. So it is predominantly infrahyoid. Infrahyoid. It can be suprahyoid also, but. Right now, I can say that is definitely infrahyoid. This particular symptom, strider, it means that there is some involvement of the larynx. Larynx involvement, it still means it's a predominant infrahyoid neck pathology. So, it is more than 18 mm everywhere. C7 and C6, 18 mm was the criteria. Above that, if I hope you remember that, it starts from 8.5, then 6, and then 7. It means it reduces it first and then it widens again. So, this is at the level of C1, 8.5, then 6 mm at C2, and then 7 mm at C3. So, even if we don't know all these measurements, we sure we're doing something abnormal. So, now let's have a look at the CT sine loop. So, here we go. We're starting from top to bottom. What do we see? I can see something gone wrong with the maxillary and the ethmoid sinus also. But here is where the pathology is starting. What do you see now? I know it's a difficult case and I really don't want you to stress yourself if you don't get the findings. But uh, if you get them very well, let's have a look at the serial loop once again. So this is from the base of the skull and this particular pathology is starting right from the base of the skull. You see anything abnormal here? So I see something here which looks like a collection to me. I can see something here which looks like a collection to me. This thing looks actually like a necrotic node to me. Then let's go down. And when I'm going down, I can see that there is some collection here. There is some collection here. And when I'm going further down, here is where the major pathologies lie. Fine. I think all of you are going to agree with me when I say that. And uh, when I'm going further down, there is basically the continuation of that inflammatory pathology where I can see a soft tissue which is seen extending all around the anterior aspect of the vertebra and the posterior aspect of the larynx. Then going further down, here I can see only some edema, nothing else. So, let's quickly revise and write down what are the spaces which are involved. So to do that, let's go at the top. So, I can see something gone wrong here. I hope all of you can see this. So, this is likely to be the retropharyngeal space. Now, you can ask me, so why is it called dangerous space? It can be dangerous space, but uh, because it's more eccentric in location, located just posterior to the pharynx. So, I'll first give a possibility of the retropharyngeal space. Now, when I'm going down, 
So this is the musculature, probably the longest coli. Now I can see the collection just anterior to them and it is on the eccentric aspect that is on the left lateral side. So again, my top bet is retropharyngeal space here as well. So let's clean it up. Let's clean it up. Now let's have a look here. Now, if you see carefully, I can see something here. What is the space? This space looks like the parapharyngeal space. So I have involvement of the parapharyngeal space as well and a very subtle collection I can see here or at least you can say an inflammatory soft tissue thickening. What is this space? This is a very important space of suprahyoid neck and this is basically the continuation of the visceral space from the infrared neck. I hope you remember what is this which actually encases your pharynx. This is the pharyngeal mucosal space and I have also told you that pharyngeal mucosal space also encases the peritonsillar space so probably this is some pathology which is actually involving the tonsillar pillars on the left side and then I have involvement of this particular area which is the retropharyngeal space and now I can see that this particular soft tissue is extending on either side of the midline but I don't see any clear-cut abscess. Why I'm not calling it an abscess? Because abscess would be seen as a thick-walled, peripherally enhancing collection. Here, what are we seeing? Do you see any thick walls? Does it really look like an abscess to you? No, I don't see any wall of it. Although I can see the soft tissue all throughout, which is nothing but fluids, but I don't see a wall. I don't think that it is of some form of an abscess. Now, very important question that you can ask here is, it is lying in the midline here. I can see that the carotid space has been anteriorly displaced. I can see some inflammatory stranding in this important space. So, what are the other spaces that are potentially involved? Here, I would say that I've already talked about retropharyngeal space, but Possible involvement of danger space in this case, I cannot rule out. Why? Because in the retropharyngeal space collection, you won't have that much displacement. Although it can occur and it is very difficult to differentiate between the two as I told you. Until unless you see the alar fascia, which you can obviously not see by naked eyes, it is so thin, you cannot tell that. But when you see this type of a gross displacement of the pharynx of the larynx anteriorly along with the soft tissue reaching almost up to the vertebral body there is a high likelihood of danger space involvement and when I'm going inferiorly specifically at this level now obviously this is the retropharyngeal area but I can see some soft tissue edema posterior to the retropharyngeal area also in fact I can see some soft tissue encasing the carotid space also so it means there is a high likelihood of danger space involvement now let's go back to this particular space, what I was telling you somewhere here. What is this particular space? This is the other important infrared neck space that is posterior cervical space. So this is one of those cases in, in which almost all the neck spaces have been involved and those neck spaces have been involved which are very critical, very very crucial for life. So we have posterior neck spaces like retropharyngeal space, danger space involvement, we have involvement of parapharyngeal space, pharyngeal mucosal space involvement along with possible involvement of the tonsil addiction also. We have posterior cervical space involvement and a very, very important thing which I'll highlight with a different color. We have carotid space involvement. But third important part of the question is, are we dealing with an abscess? So probably here, this particular area was an abscess because I can see some walls around it. I can also see some necrotic nodes along with some non-necrotic nodes. But when I'm coming inferiorly, and let's just clean it up. When I'm coming inferiorly at this level, I can see predominant involvement of the posterior neck spaces. That is retropharyngeal and danger spaces. I don't see a well demarcated collection. You just can't put a needle in or a drainage catheter in and drain it up. In fact, this looks more likely to be a, a retropharyngeal or danger space edema. This is another entity, retropharyngeal space edema. So if you see a peripheral enhancing collection, as we saw in our first case, that is more likely an abscess. But when you see fluid which is traversing all throughout the posterior neck spaces, 
and you don't see any well-defined walls. And if you look at the fluid, the fluid also looks to be sterile. I mean, there's no high attenuation. There's no significant inflammation either. So you see that this part of the neck looks less inflamed as compared to this part of the neck, which looks very much inflamed. I can see thickening of the pretisma here. I can see all this soft tissue stranding, reticular pattern of edema more on the left side. But here, the inflammatory changes are minimal. Well, we're dealing with a deep neck space infection, but the place where the infection is lying is in the suprahyoid neck. And inferiorly, the only extension of the edematous process is occurring as we saw in this particular case.